looks like somebody was fishing green marshmallows here. This must be the spot. of it they weren't fishing all that far offshore either. This is somebody's hot spot. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's a nice fish, too. Look at the size of that trout. Look at the size of that trout. Come here. Pretty fish. Yep, so that's what we're going for right there. So it's just a matter of speed. I was still winding a little bit too fast. Got to slow it down. slow it down just a little bit that fish chased me quite a ways in too I mean yep that old big trap This spot's always been really good. I think it's because this is the the primary creek channel right here. And the, the fish like to lay in it. Another fish.
So it appears to be a difference of retrieve speed. If I can get that retrieve speed really low, just push your digging on it. Like that speed right there. If I can get it going that speed, Good. Looks like that's about as far as I'm going to get it out there. So, let's let it sink. Let it do a job. Came across this little technique on, uh, oh, what was that little pond? Um, Junction City Pond. During this time of year, actually a little bit later, they start throwing, um, what do you call them? Uh, not holdover trout, um, brooder trout. They start throwing their, their brood stock that they get all the pellet heads from into the, uh, into that pond. There's not really a, uh, a fishery there per se. I mean, it's got, it's got mosquito fish. And it's got some bass and some crappie in it. I swear I caught something there. It looked like a bass got so desperate it fucked a crappie. I could be wrong. But I'm not going to make any guesses. So anyway, um... I figured out that during this time of year, those, uh, those mosquito fish, they like to hang out around around the uh, root systems of the trees that are that are along the, sh the side of that shoreline there and so uh, I found if you took a, uh, a big corky and an itty bitty teeny tiny crappie jig and you just went like this along the shoreline with it you could catch some big freaking trout I may yet film that one of these times, but uh, I don't know. It's gotten a little bit different there since I was doing that. So I don't know if it'll still work or not, but probably. I mean, I got it to work several years in a row. I don't see why it wouldn't now. But yeah, you just let it sit for a moment and then get a little twitch or twitch twitch. Only there I was throwing like a, uh, like about a four foot leader. Four or five foot leader. And I don't know if it was directly on the bottom. I think it was close. All I do know is I caught a lot of big trout doing that on that lake. pond rather pool impoundment however you want to put it and you may or may not have guessed a fly rod is not my first choice but it works you know I don't understand how some guys can get so hung up on fly rods that that's all they'll fish with I mean, because to me, it's like it's like a screwdriver 
or, or a sledgehammer, you know, it's just, it's a tool. And it, it works for a limited application, a limited number of applications, and then it's not the most optimal tool, you know, I mean, but I'll never forget it, I watched a, uh, a fly fishing program where the guy went out on his sport fishing boat with a rig not entirely dissimilar from what I'm fishing <laughs> and uh, he's out there fishing for rock cod with floating line by the way he didn't even use sinking line he used floating line and, uh, and he's trying to fly fish for rock fish I mean come on folks I've seen that work I've seen it work Okay, but not in 60 feet of water. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the fish were, were suspended and whatnot, and they were fishing off of some kelp, but it seemed like everybody else was out fishing this guy like seven fish to one. And I mean, if it was such a wonderful uh, wonderful technique that the guy the the numbers were reversed that this guy was just spanking him and you know everybody else is looking stupid i would be like yeah okay fish a fly rod but you know <laughs> the guy next to him is going straight up and down with a freaking iron jig or a diamond jig rather and just tearing the crap out of the rockfish and this guy waiting eight forevers for his fucking bait to get down to where the fish are he catches one fish and then he winds back up and takes him two forevers to get the fish in the boat and uh yeah so like I said this guy's getting his ass kicked by everybody around him and you know it, it just it seemed like somebody trying to use a sledgehammer for a a screwdriver job, you know? Not particularly effective. So like I said, there's a time and a place for a fly rod. This is the time and place. You know, I mean, that is if it were being as effective as a spinner, there's a fish over there. Yeah, if it were something where I've already I'd already caught two trout on it, I wouldn't even have any thought about oh you know I'm gonna change back to a rooster tail because I'd be catching so many fish it wouldn't matter. But that obviously is not the case. But you know I I've fished this technique and done well enough on it that I've actually had trout rise and try and eat the damn bobber. I mean, when they're trying to eat the bobber, it's, you're usually catching like eight, ten fish that day doing this technique. Just nice little, nice little scoots. You know, you can see the bait trailing behind it. And that's exactly what you want right there. It's nice little scoots like that. So that bait's just going scoot, scoot, scoot up off the bottom. Alright, this is obviously not it. Rooster tail is superior to this for right now. So we're going to put this down, pick the rooster tail back up. Try a couple more casts. If I don't nail anything in a couple casts, then I'm probably going to go back to my plug and finish off this spot again, and then I'm going to head over there. I think I might I might head further down the shoreline this way because it's looking like the fish are in deeper water. Or they're opting for deeper water. And I did see a little bit of activity over there. Not enough to make me abandon all hope of catching fish anywhere else and just going over there and hitting it. But enough to where I'm taking it seriously.
so to give this a little more time. I don't do any good. I'll switch back to the plug. Just gotta be willing to change it up, you know. Gotta gotta be willing to give new things a try. You know, catching fish on what you're doing. Start looking around in the box for something else. Because clearly the fish are here. And I just caught two. And clearly the fish are eating, because I just caught two. So it's just a matter of narrowing it down, you know, am I not catching fish because the fish aren't here anymore, or am I not catching fish because, you know, why am I not catching fish, it could be that I caught all the fish that are in this area, I doubt it, because I've, I've come up on this spot before and with the old man just caught five to eight fish right here, I couldn't tell you exactly how many because we lost quite a few. Just cruising along this shoreline right in here. We've caught quite a few fish. It's funny, a long time ago, the, uh, my dad took my grandmother, his mother, out here. And uh, they had a little thing going on where he'd bring her down here and rig her up with uh, with power bait on a on a uh, a two bait rig you know where he had two two baits in line and just knock the crap out of the big trout but it was later in the years when they're it's either when they're draining it down or when they were filling it back up again one of the two anyway uh it was a real kick for her, and they came out to this, this same area. I mean, I, I would imagine it was either where I'm at or further down that way, but pretty close. And, uh, yeah, it did pretty good.